All right, so I'm in pro negative standard on both. There's something very different about the look of the X-T200 and the X-T2. I know one has a Bayer sensor and one has an X-Trans sensor, but why is it so different? What What is that? Can you tell that there's just, it, it, it's exposed the same, the settings are the same, but it, it's totally, a, it's a different look. All right, so here's the X-T2 with the same settings. I might have to actually turn the volume, the internal volume down on this camera because I turned the mic up. So how does that look? Does that look different? Does that look better? Worse? Provia on the X-T2. For some reason, Provia just looks better on the X-T2 than it does on the X-T200. What is that? Like, why does it look so much better on this camera than it does on the other? What's up guys? I'm going to do a quick autofocus test on the Viltrox 13mm f1.4. So we're on the Fuji X-T2, so this is a bit older camera, but uh, it's been working pretty well. I've done a full video on my main channel, Michael Relevant, with this setup already, so I'm pretty happy with it. I'm hand-holding it right now, but I'm going to switch over to a tripod in just a second. All right, so I tried underexposing it one stop, and it still looks terrible. I don't know what's going on with this camera. I... See, the Fuji X-T2 is a very usable camera for video. I know it doesn't have any stabilization in the camera or the lens for this setup right here, but... I don't understand how those reviewers were so positive about the X-T200 because after using it for a little bit there, like I've lost some respect from some, some YouTube channels that said this was a great camera and the best vlogging camera of whatever year it came out because I couldn't, it's just so finicky. The dials are terrible. Everything's way too hard to change. They're just, it's just not convenient. And if you put auto settings on, it, it, it the autofocus is terrible it the, the auto exposure is just jumping all crazy like i can't handle the auto exposure the auto everything auto on that camera and that's what it's meant for it's meant for people who use auto everything it's terrible so here is pro negative standard indoors with the fuji xt2 and the viltrox 13 millimeter f 1.4 at 1.4 so here's classic chrome and we're in a different location next to a different window so this is provia there's no reason to test out velvia because obviously that's not gonna look good indoors on my face it's just gonna make me look like i'm really sunburnt which i am but <laughs> yeah i know fuji tends to make my eyes look more tired and these wrinkles look worse it's almost like just more hyper-realistic. It's, it's realistic. <laughs> Sony just smooths out everything, you know, even if I don't have any face smoothing stuff on. So this is Astia with the same settings indoors. What do you guys think looks better? We got Pro Negative, standard, then now we got Astia. So here's Classic Chrome, and we're in a different location next to a different window. I don't know why it keeps blowing out. It looks fine before I hit record and then it just starts blowing me out for some reason. So why is 400 the lowest ISO I can go to? I don't understand that. All right, so I turned auto ISO off. I turned the image stabilization off completely. Because I was getting this really weird focused breathing and that fixed it, that image stabilization, when it's on a tripod, just destroys the shot. So, well, I moved the camera back just a little bit, so let's try zooming all the way in. Let's see if we can actually focus on it this time.
So this test is important to me personally because I'm trying to figure out if I really want to keep this camera. Is it true that you can only do like auto exposure on this thing? If that's the case, then this is horrible. <laughs> like, I would just use the X-T2 for, for any kind of video with Fuji. I mean, it looks about the same, but I don't know how to switch it to just full manual in video. It's jumping all over the place. I changed it from Provia to Astia to see if that would do anything. The colors, um, the colors might be slightly better. Might be slightly less red. All right, so now I am at f 1.2 on the Viltrox 75 millimeter f 1.2 on the Fuji XT 200. So I think I may have finally figured out the settings on this thing. It's not as bright now, uh, so. Okay, so I really need to update the firmware on the camera and the lens, because I recently just got this stuff, and you can tell that it, it, you gotta stay totally still to, to get the autofocus to stay on you. I mean, it's got a nice background, though. That's that's a pretty cool shot. I know it can focus this close, but it, it does take longer to focus close. But I know I know it's capable of doing it. I've just I just saw it do it. I literally just you just showed me that you could focus this close. So yeah, I mean it can focus. I'm about a foot and a half away. I this is almost vlog distance. I can almost hold the camera at this distance away. So yeah, that's that's about the closest you're gonna get to you here's let's see if I can actually hold it. Okay, so I'm holding the lens now. You really couldn't vlog. Sorry. So now I've got the colors in pro negative standard. And honestly, this is probably the most pleasing look that I've had so far today. I feel like it's more neutral than even classic chrome looks a little like like I'm a zombie. So that's pro negative standard. So this is what classic chrome looks like. It's a little bit more like desaturated. Why is it not focusing on me now? Okay. <laughs> so yeah, uh, it's like, it's just a little bit different. Like it's a little more contrasty, I guess, than the pro negative standard was a little more neutral than this. So if you look up Michael Relevant, the video about five easy low impact tricks on a skateboard. I filmed on this lens just a second ago. So that's a kind of a good test of, of how this lens works. I was using it side by side with an R6 with the RF24 to 105 F4. So it's a really good comparison of uh, like full frame to a crop sensor comparison. But yeah, here it is. I'm gonna move out of the frame, let it autofocus on the background. Now I'm going to step back into the frame and see how quickly it locks on to me. So tracking is on, face and eye recognition is on. So that is the Viltrox 13mm f1.4. So yeah, I like this lens. If I were to uh, hand hold it and walk around, I can kind of get 
you can get an idea of what it would look like. There's no stabilization in this camera or in the lens. I'm not sure what it did right there when I was backlit, but now I should be lit properly again. So yeah, that's a quick walking and talking test with this lens. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like this kind of content, scroll through the channel, check out my other videos. I'm gonna have more videos on this lens. I'll test it indoors and I'll also do some photography with it. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.